I'm trying to find this uh, break in this field coil wire that come off a Zenith, 1930 Zenith radio off the speaker so I can fix it. And I've already done 1,933 turns and haven't found it. Wouldn't you know that the break is going to be somewhere near the center of the coil? I probably got a couple thousand more turns to make. Anyway, I just wanted to show my setup here. This thing weighs a ton, and I got a wooden pole through the field coil, and I got oil on the pole, a little bit of oil under the there. This has a raised edge about a quarter inch all the way around, which is ideal for this. And so I'm cranking away, but uh thought you might like to see this rig up that I made. I'm going to put this all together on a board, but right now this is convenient because I can actually turn this back and forth while I'm cranking and get a nice spread on this bobbin. This is from a, a line cord wire that I bought. So when I find a break, I can fix it and then switch the rolls and, uh, you know, wind it back on that one and I'll take more time winding it on that one than I am unwinding it but because that's what takes time but I gotta find a break or to save this speaker anyway that's where I'm at I just thought it was interesting uh, you might want to see that this is a cheapy winder from China but it's all heavy it's cast iron except for the only plastic is this and the crank handle Every, everything else, all the other gears are metal, and it seems to do a good job. I oiled it, and it's heavy, so it stays stationary. It's a little rickety because I got it on a double-folded uh, bubble wrap here. So, there we go. Uh, see how it goes when I'm done. Well, I think I finally found the brake. Here it is. And there's how much of the spool is left. It's almost empty. Oh, I'll shut my light off. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's some metal in there. See that? I think this was a structural break. I don't think this was an electrical break. Could have been. Anyway, I'm going to connect it and see. I got the end of the wire right here sticking out of the end of the spool. So, and I got the other end of this one here. So, I'm going to join the two together and see if that's it. So, I'll be right back. Okay, I was right. There's the last piece. You see it there? It goes to here. <laughs> It broke right at the, right underneath where it was wrapping. What they did is they taped it here, taped it down here, ran it up to this side, and started wrapping, which is what you do, right? It broke right there. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop putting it back on here, and then we'll check the resistance and uh, see how we are. I'm sure we'll be fine. So anyway, thanks for watching. Well, okay, getting this uh, field coil rewound. I'm already up to 20,223 uh, rotations or turns on this coil. And, uh, you know, that old saying, I flew in from Atlanta, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> well, yeah, my arms are tired. What I did is I taped two... CDs to the side of this field coil uh, because which because the uh, the bobbin field coil bobbin has a big old hole and so these whole nut systems it just goes right through right but that worked cracked the CDs a little bit but I don't care they're uh, blank CDs and they're old and I got plenty but it worked fine so once I get it. Um, Finish rolling it. I don't have much more to go. Maybe another couple thousand turns. Um, then I can untape it. You know, take the original off, and I'll show that. And then we will um, 
put it back in the speaker and see if we can get this radio to work when we recap it correctly. But boy, what a job it is to rewind this field coil. Um, I repaired it in two places, tested the resistance, and I think I had like a 1,028 ohms or something. It supposed to be around 1,080 ohms, I believe. So I might add some more, mag not these, but some more magnet wire to the end to bring it up to uh, 1,080 ohms, maybe even uh, 1,100 ohms. Since voltage is higher today, I could actually put in a little bit more turn turns and help drop that voltage down a little bit more. But, you know, this is mostly to give it a hum, right? This is a field coil to uh, give it some of the hum in the power supply and also to provide a magnet for the speaker. So we don't want to go up too high with resistance because we want the speaker to function properly. Uh, not that a few thousand turns one way or the other would make any difference. So we'll see. Uh, when I get it done, I will uh, do a final video showing you the field coil, and then we'll get back to the radio. Thanks for watching. Okay, I thought maybe you might want to watch uh, me wrap a couple hundred turns just to get an idea how, how I'm doing it here. Oop, not like that. And this is how it's done. That back spool that I'm taking it off of, I keep adding some oil from time to time, both to that CPVC shaft that's sticking up, and also underneath the spool so it can slide easier. But I don't want to slide too easy, you want a little bit of tension. And if, you know, you know, if it spins faster than I'm pulling it in, it'll unravel and tie into knots. The spool's getting really full already. I don't think I got much more on that back spool. I'm up to 22,000 turns and counting. Probably need to add some more oil to my turning machine here too. It's been doing quite a bit of work the last day. Uh-oh. Time to take off a little bit there. Must be getting near the end. That's good because I gotta get this inside that speaker housing. Should fit fine because I'm wrapping it pretty tight. I'm actually pinching the wire as I move it back and forth. Plus just the sheer friction of the system helps to keep it taut. They do sell wire tensioners for this, but if you take your time and keep an eye on what you're doing, you can probably do it without a wire tensioner. I hope you can hear me and see this, but I'll edit the video accordingly. I shine that light down on it so I can see if I'm getting it evenly across as much as I can anyway. I could go a lot slower across left and right, but that really don't matter because 
you just need it even, basically. And, you know, if you, if you keep it even, then you, you're getting an adequate amount of coverage. I have to watch the edges because of the blue tape will grab the wire easy. But this side needs a little bit. There we go, that looks better. I could go a lot faster if I had a tensioner. But I'm in no big hurry. This is pretty good. It didn't take me long with a couple hours to get this far of winding. I had to solder a couple of joints. But Okay, it's done. Taking it off the spool. I put some uh, Teflon tape around it. Kind of keep it there. And I moved the end wire over to where the beginning wire goes. Okay. Now, let's move this out of the way. And we'll take a look at what we got. This is the inside coil, and this is the outside coil. Outside of the coil. And this is the coil. Just kind of taking this and taking the other side. Another time. Okay, so this is what we got for resistance. the end where I had started it, right here. But it looks like enough to get a connection. Almost. There we go. 1089. And I believe the schematic calls for 1080. Oh, maybe that is it. So I might have to add a couple hundred more ohms to this. I can put a resistor in somewhere. Uh, to it. Yeah, it was supposed to be 1,250 ohms. I didn't make sense it'd go up, so I got to add uh, about 200 ohms to this. I can actually, um, well, I could actually add it on there, but I'm already getting big. This was the original wrapper. Oh, that's actually uh, not that bad. Amazing. I did pretty good. Um, yeah, I could add another couple hundred turns on here. I've ordered some more wire. Um, when it comes in, I'll, I'll get this up to 1,200 ohms, which is what it's supposed to be, 1,250. So let me write that on here. I won't have to go looking for it again. Let 
that's the ideal. So I will get it up to 1250. And nice coil. Look at that. That looks good. Well, I thought maybe you'd like to see the field coil. And so there it is. And it's got uh, new wires coming up going to the output transformer with some tape here holding the adjuster for the for this guy Oop. I want to hit that okay and uh, put a wire tie there to hold it so it it's all set for the height of the speaker field call works great which I'll show you when I get it back in the case I went ahead and fixed this damaged spot here. Uh, what I did is I put some cardboard. I don't know if you can see that. But I put some cardboard on the inside. Let's see if we can get it in the light here. All right. See in there? Put some cardboard around it and glued it in. And that will keep it from tearing up. So I ran cardboard past this glued it here and here as well as in the middle and then i ran a piece cut it out that shape and ran a piece here underneath and glued it in and so that'll keep it down and i'll probably put a little bit of glue here because it is um, transparent glue i might just use some uh, super glue on that to hold this frizzy stuff down a little so it'll be a little bit more aesthetically pretty but um it is what it is, but it'll be a lot better. So yeah, I could put a little super glue on that. Somebody obviously yanked the cord and I did that. Anyway, let me show you the cabinet it's going into. This is it here. Isn't that amazing? I know there's not much light in here and I apologize for that, but look at that cabinet. And we'll get a good look at it once we got it in there. It's got shelves on the side. I mean, Zenith really outdid themselves on this one. Look at that diamond print. Just beautiful. So, we'll get it mounted back in there and do a test run.